um, today. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to give you an introduction into the very early game history. Maybe first uh, I um, must um, excuse myself, I have a um, little bit temperature, so um, if I'm not speaking that fluently, it's because I'm ill. <laughs> and, um, okay, um, the, the situation I found before I um, started this little research pro project um, was that um, um, there's for sure a huge computer history. And this starts with the Abacus, and I'm pretty sure you, most of you know this timeline. Um, but in this established computer history, usually games are not mentioned, or if they are mentioned, they are just mentioned as not very important. Um, and um, then there's the other um, um, group of researchers, these are the video game or the computer game researchers, and usually this um, history, this timeline starts um, with in, the, in the early 60s, and so there's somehow, um, if you want to describe it in that way, a, a dark age of computer game history, um, and this is um, from um, the late uh, 40s um, up to the early 60s, and that's our topic here, and um, I compiled um, some some informations, and what I'm doing here is now to to um, to tell you a little bit about the computer history. I'm pretty sure I don't must tell you that much, uh, but I focus on games. That's the new thing uh, that I structure everything um, into uh, into the direction of games. All right. So please, if you if you have any questions or comments, feel free to express it instantly. Um, yeah, so this is um, usually one of uh, uh, um, these um, little stories which were told from the computer um, historists. Um, this um, fake, um, this Schach Türke, this is uh, the fake machine. Um, um, it's, 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 it's meant to be a, um, a machine um, which can um, beat humans playing chess, but uh, actually it's just a fake. There's um, a dwarf sitting in this machine, um, and this um, is a quite famous story. So um, the inventor of um, the Schachtürke um, gets very famous in his time, and also um, this story is very well known in this timelines of computer history because it's yeah it's 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 a nice story, and um, but it shows that um, um, the um, um, that they tried, uh, or that, that, that there is a wish before computers exist that humans can play against machines. Um, at this time, in the 18th century, for sure, the technique was not that um, <laughs> far developed, was not existent, and so it, it's just a fake. But um, um, the wish was already there. And um, um, to, um, to answer the, 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 the question of the question, um, just at the beginning of the talk, when was the um, very first computer game program? What is the earliest computer game? Um, it's, it's, it's somehow a simple answer. Um, the long computers exist, the long exists computer games. So um, um, the problem is more to find um, documents um, about these early games, and um, I have um, find some documents um, I will show you right now, and the interesting thing is that um, I found every aspect which is connected in nowadays with computer games. Science, okay, it's not the most important aspect, but it becomes an important aspect more and more. Um, business, for sure, it's making money, and fun entertaining people. These three aspects I found very early um, and um, I want to give you now examples for every of these aspects. And um, I want to start with science and if I tell you about um, games and science, so if I say games I mean computer games. Um, 
um, then um, I must <coughs> I must um, tell you about uh, chess and about knots and crosses. So um, these are the two games um, which were very important for the people who built these early computers. As you know, uh, as you might know, um, these early, very first computers are developed in, in the framework of the Second World War, the Colossus computer, um, secret projects, and um, for, for a special purpose, not to invent a computer, but uh, to, to uh, um, decode the German Enigma. Um, and, and so these were the first computers. For sure, we also have here in Germany Konrad Suse. Um, and so these very few computers which um, exist uh, as first computers were in the, um, exist in the Second World War because of the Second World War and um, were mostly secret projects. And um, so this is one problem why um, I was not able to found very early um, so uh, examples very early means um, um, in the 40s, in the time during the Second World War. Um, but um, as you can see, um, the um, history of computer chess, these started very early um, in uh, 1940. And um, there are um, one of, of, of the big names in, in computer history, Shannon, Claude Shannon. The other one is Alan Turing in, in UK. These both are very, were very interested in um, making a machine uh, which can play chess. And um, I used the occasion of a very nice, um, of a very nice um, online exhibition at the Computer um, History Org Museum in California to, 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 to show you one or two um, documents which um, show why they are interested. And this is um, somehow astonishing. <clears throat> so this is um, I, I um, this is a very good uh, um, exhibition. Um, I suggest if you are interested to go a little bit deeper in, into the chess history um, to to have a look at this. And um, yeah, what I want to show you here now is um, here you see this is the Schachtürke also. And um, then they, um, Shannon and, and others, um, did um, um, paper programs uh, in, the, in the early uh, 40s. They wrote chess programs. Um, and because there were no computer who, uh, which can, can execute these programs, they, do it by, they did it by, their, by themselves. And so they uh, um, compete against uh, uh, each other. Um, they're calculating their own programs um, by their wetware and um, to figure out which, is, which program is, um, is uh, the best. And um, so that, that shows that, um, the, um, yeah, that, it's, that, that the wish to, to, to make computers play is a very, very early wish. It's, 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 um, it's earlier than, than also the first computers. And here you see, there's one, one uh, picture. Um, this is uh, the document of this uh, entry, 1940. Um, they, they also build machines. Um, these are somehow dedicated, um, oops, uh, these are somehow dedicated gaming consoles, if you want it uh, that way. So this machine only could play chess and nothing uh, else. But um, for sure, these machines were far, far away to be a serious competitor for a human. Um, and um, to answer the question why uh, um, they have such a strong interest in, in, in making a computer play, I would like to show you um, um, one other um, text of Claude Shannon. And um, there he explains um, how computer chess programs should look. And he also explains why they are from uh, for, for the scientists uh, um, from, uh, from interest, and um, it's this one here, programming a computer to play chess. Um, 
It's um, published 1950. It's written 1949. Um, and um, I, I, I just show you the, um, the beginning of it. And um, that's surprising. It's so I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, Sorry, don't know. It's a little bit too small. Maybe this size here. Is it okay? No. So and um, he said it. it um, this paper is concerned with the problem of constructing a computer routine, a program for modern general purpose computer. This was a big thing, a general purpose computer. This was a new thing at this times. Um, which will enable it to play chess. And um, then it's very interesting that he stated, all thought perhaps of no practical importance, the question is of th theoretical interest. And it is hoped that a satisfactory solution of this problem will act as a wedge in attacking other problems of a similar nature and of greater significance. Some po possibilities in this direction are, now uh, he counts what, uh, what he think computer um, made in the future. Machines for designing filters and equalizers, okay. Machines for designing relay and switching circuits. circuits. Machines which will handle routing of telephone calls based on the individual circumstances rather than by fixed pattern. This was one of the most important thing. To, to, to learn uh, um, um, a computer play means that the computer must be able to decide. He must be able to decide which move is better than the other. And this is the, the groundbreaking idea which is connected to this chess playing problem. Um, machines for performing symbolic, non-numerical ma mathematical operations, so for sure, Computers are only symbolic. Uh, um, if if you are not, if you have not the skills like like you have, so for me they are 100% uh, uh, symbolic. Um, uh, machines capable of translating from one language to another. Machines for making stra strategic decisions in simplified military operations. Um, and uh, machines capable for orchestrating a melody. That's an interesting point also. We will have a very nice example at the end of, of the talk. And machines capable of logical deduction. So, and as you can see, this is a really broad and uh, but, but very right um, um, Vorhersage, um, prediction. prediction, thank you, um, w what computers will be. And um, that this is so strong connected to chess is uh, one of the interesting founds I did um, in, in this little research project. Okay, um, let's go back. Um, and um, <coughs> now we, we come to, to knots and crosses. So um, this is the English name in America. Um, it is called tic-tac-toe. And so I'm sure you all know um, the game, and this is somehow the little brother of, 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 of the chess uh, uh, program. Um, and as you have seen, um, it was not it was not impossible um, to it was not possible to implement this this thinking and these thoughts and these paper programs into an existing machine then. But it was possible to build a knots and crosses um, computer or to program a computer at this time to play knots and crosses because it is much simpler. Um, but it's somehow also a strategic game, and a lot of these problems um, Shannon uh, wants to solve with, um, with the chess um, game um, also could be um, found here, or are also are connected with knots and crosses, but it's also, it, there are some connections to, to, to the fun part and the entertainment part also. And what, what is great here, I can show you um, some of, of, of uh, I can show you at least one example because there's an emulator ex uh, existing and I can show you how it looked. Um, so the first knots and crosses I found was in 1950 um, programmed by a Bletchley Park veteran. At Bletchley Park, this is um, the uh, laboratory where the Colossus computer um, um, was developed. So this um, um, secret military project, it was kept secret until the early 70s. 
And people like him who invented this Colossus computer for sure um, keep on working with computers and he is the first example um, 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 what I found. And as you can see, this is the Pilot Ace computer. It's an English computer. Um, and this is the time where um, the, the purpose of, of the computer construction shifted a little bit from the military, military complex up to the commercial uh, complex. So the, the computers which were invented in the Second World War were there. Um, um, in spite of the World War, uh, World War was, was over, and now the people think, what, what, what can we do with, uh, with these computers? And they, they uh, keep developing these computers, and they also um, um, start thinking, uh, selling these computers as a commercial product. This is somehow a new um, thought at this time, but this happened, and we are in this time right now. And um, here you can see uh, uh, for which purposes this Pilot S computer um, were um, used. And um, that's one interesting thing I want to show you here. Um, it's it's um, impossible to, s it's, it's very small here, but I can show you um, a closer picture. Oops. Oh no. Okay. No. I'm sorry. Um, the, the, the knots and crosses I want to show you is programmed now at the Ad AdSec computer. I haven't found <laughs> the knots and crosses programmed on the Pilot Ace computer, but it's somehow very similar and um, so I want um, to, sh to um, um, show you here these, these are um, early monitors this was quite um, usual at this time so that there were monitors connected for debugging purposes only to see um, what's going on in the registers what's going on in the memory what's going on in the machine and, and if you have the skills you can translate it and you know the machine is still um, doing right or it's doing wrong and then you have to, to, to change something. So this was quite usual this times so that you have while the computer was calculating to change that you have to change parts of the computer. Um, these are these usually these big tubes um, which were not that stable. And so these um, three monitors, I have a closer picture here. Um, here you can see it, you can see the pictures. Um, so usually um, the monitor shows pictures like this here, so it's more or less abstract uh, unless you don't know what it means. And um, what these early game programmers did are actually just hacks. So they, um, they make pictures on this debugging uh, monitors which makes sense for us. And um, that's um, for us, or let's say for me as a non-specialist. And here you see what, um, what's, um, what's shown on, 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 on one of these uh, three uh, monitors, and we see um, the, the, the game of, of knots and crosses and tic-tac-toe. And um, yeah, let's, let's step into it, let's play it. So I thought it, it, uh, it, it's working with drag and drop. Um, sorry, why does this... auch sein, dass ich es mit, mit Kopieren machen muss. Okay. Er kopiert nicht. 
Um, ich bin mir ziemlich sicher. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty um, I'm sure that um, it, it, it's working with drag and drop. So you, here you see the program. <laughs> Maybe here? Oh, maybe this? Yeah, okay. <coughs> so here you can see what these monitors usually show when the computer was calculating. And there you can see how long it, it needs to, to load the program. Yes, for sure. Sorry. I can't make it bigger, so. So now it's um, after. Um, yeah, so I, I can start, so I, I dial, this is um, the um, input interface, <laughs> there. <clears throat> so I start, and um, so the, the field uh, right below is the one, and the field um, left above is um, the um, nine. So I start with um, right, um, Okay, I'm, I have the crosses and he has um, the nodes. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, then um, um, I try here, this one, this must be the um, seven. All right, so now I must enter six. Now eight. Okay, and now three, and it's a drawn game, um, um, which is quite usual if you play knots and crosses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so um, this is, um, I, I think that, that gives you a good impression under which circumstances and um, um, these early game programmers programmed games and this is also a game, it, it was used to, to, uh, as a fun game for, for, uh, from, from the scientists who work with uh, these um, ADSEC computers, it's, also, it's uh, also an English computer, but it was programmed not only because of entertainment purposes. Um, so, um, alright, then we come to the next story. Um, <laughs> How can I kill this person? <laughs> oh, oh. Stop it! Ah, stop! You think I should stop it? I should stop it? No, no. Here, I do it this way. <laughs> okay. So, now, we come to the second um, um, aspect, and this aspect is business. And I've heard a very interesting story about um, um, how games were connected in 1950 also to business, um, to making business. And this is somehow very astonishing if you um, remind yourself that um, at this time uh, computers were still very, very, uh, exist in very, very small numbers. But not by chance, this game is connected with the Ferranti Mark I computer. The Mark I computer was one of these very early computers uh, developed in Manchester for military purposes and so on. And after that they decided to make a commercial version out of it and they invited the company um, Ferranti um, to, to join um, the project and to develop a commercial version of this uh, Mark I computer and this commercial version is, uh, was called Ferranti Mark I computer. And what, what do you do if you, if you, if you want to, to sell a computer? You must go to people who might buy this uh, machine and so this is exactly what Ferranti did. They go to fairs and the first fair they visited was uh, 1950 in London, an industrial fair. Um, what we see here is um, a picture taken one year later in Berlin, just around the corner in Charlottenburg. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the second thing they did to sell the computer or to impress people there at this fair was that they reconstructed. It is 
the example of the first dedicated gaming console, console what we have here right now. They rebuild it um, in, uh, uh, and make a version out of it. They they call Nimrod, and this version uh, from from uh, of the uh, Ferranti Mark One only could do one program, a game, and the game was called Nim, and uh, the the console was uh, uh, um, named Nimrod, um, and um, what we see here is. Um, the um, display at the um, Berlin Fair here, uh, 1951, and um, you see there above, you see the, um, the display, the monitor, if you want so, and um, here you see players. Uh, maybe I ask you, do, do you recognize uh, one of the, the players here in the first row? This is Ludwig Erhard. That's the player here at the, at the picture. It's uh, the former um, German... Um, um, business minister and <laughs> and also on the background you know this guy here yeah. Yeah. so if I, I'm pretty sure if Gerhard Schröder would join the games convention in Leipzig it was it would be a huge a huge sensation but then at the beginning it was somehow usual that um, at the very first games uh, so the most important people in Germany um, have a, um, a match against this computer and I show you um, the game. It's um, a, a traditional game of matches. And um, um, so they chose this game because it fits very well into their needs. And um, <coughs> <coughs> OK, well, something is happening. How late is it? Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so why this install? So what's the problem here? Also, my computer is somehow historic, so <laughs> it needs an upgrade. <clears throat> okay, but it's no problem. I can. Um, um, no, I show you my hard disk. <laughs> I think it's not very interesting. Okay. So here we are. This is This one should work. Is this Firefox? No, no, couldn't be. I tried once to cancel it, but um, so I, I got the feeling that Windows don't want to, to make me cancel the Explorer, so <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I left it uh, at my hard disk, but um, at least um, I canceled it at, uh, from this list, but somehow it's a small success, but um, <laughs> okay. So, why don't this work? This is Don't give up. I don't give up. 
see, I'm really a drag and dropper. I like drag and drop, and it works. So, fine. <laughs> you, know, you know who you are applauding with this. <laughs> All right, so here we see the matches. And um, um, this is somehow what, uh, what the visitors here, the, the players can see in, in, uh, at, uh, in the place at the fair. It's uh, every um, light. Um, represents one of the match, and so the computer can can uh, tell the player what matches he um, draws and and what he what uh, matches he um, uh, left. And so the aim of the game is to be the last one who draws um, one or three uh, from one until three matches. And so the one who did this as the winner, um, but you are not allowed or you are only allowed to draw matches from one row. So, um, is there somebody who wants to <coughs> play, please? So, um, just um, shout and I take it away. So, um, PC begins, so, so he, um, he takes the first match at the top. What should we take now? So, from one, until three matches, but only from one row we can take. So please, tell me. Take Come on, you are... Pardon? Take one of another row. Yeah, just this Three one. one. All right, this one. <coughs> so he takes the other two of this row. Um, take two of the next row. All right. What does he do? Um, he takes um, two of the um, last row. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you are clever ga gamers, so you know we don't have a chance here anymore. So um, maybe another game and we start. We start now. So who wants to start? You can't, um, you can't win this game when you, uh, or the second player can force the other player to be the winner, uh, to, to lose. Yeah, that's right. So if you know how the game, uh, if you know the, these small rules, um, so um, it's very difficult to, to be beaten, and um, and um, it's it's uh, very easy to teach the computer, this early computer, this game, because um, he must not have the overview about um, um, the whole game field, but he only must know. Uh, three or four very simple rules. So if your opponent takes this, then just take that. And the computer must not know anything more. So um, this is the reason why Ferranti chose uh, choose this game, because it's simple uh, for the computer uh, to execute, but it's also impressive for the human players, because usually they don't have a chance to win against the computer, um, unless they know um, uh, unless they don't know these little tricks and these little rules. Um, all right. So, um, and this is business. Why is this business? It is business because they made this Nimrod gaming console only for selling the Ferranti Mark I computer. And after um, the fair in Berlin, they reassembled the Nimrod gaming console and did a Mark one computer again from from out of it, which they want to sell, and so um, I think this is a really uh, um, impressive um, story, and I also can um, show you or uh, can um, um, provide you with um, a broadcast, a radio broadcast at this time. So what we hear now, and maybe are there little speakers here which uh, can be connected to my little computer here? So maybe that. So. Norman, we should have the uh, table for the uh, amplifier. Oh, here, 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 here. I have it. So. So, yeah. and, and this gives, gives you an impression um, what the atmosphere at this time was. And, and it was mostly a, still a mystical um, being, computers. So it was... Um, it was um, um, connected with a lot of uh, utopische um, um, visions and um, so um, a little bit um, I think you, you can get a clue by hearing this little broadcast. I 
like everyone else, I came to a standstill before the electric brain, or as they prefer to call it, the Nimrod Digital Computer. This looks like a tremendous grey refrigerator, and it has more wiring in it than the rest of the exhibition put together, and I'm not surprised. It's absolutely terrifying. What you do, if you have the courage, is to volunteer to play a game against this machine. It's based on the old game where you have four heaps of matches, and each player takes one or more away, but only from one heap, and the person who takes the last match wins. I mean, the machine has lights instead of matches, which go out when, when you press a button to take them away. It sounds simple enough, but you wouldn't think so if you, if you saw this machine. I suppose at the next exhibition, they'll even have real heaps of matches, and awful steel arms will come out of the machine to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, is that schon Altoy, was er da prophetisch vorausgesehen hat? I don't know. Um, okay. Um, so, and now we come to the last part, and this is for sure the fun part. And uh, I'm, I'm, I will show you some examples that are somehow um, 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 collected um, by chance. So I think, and that's what I, I told you before, that um, since the first computer exists, games were programmed. And um, so I was lucky to, um, to um, get in contact with um, people who built the, or people who worked, um, to be precise, um, at the very first Australian computer. The Australian computer is the Cyrex computer. Um, um, yeah, I, I visited uh, Melbourne, and so I was introduced to this computer. It's uh, it's called the um, the last of the first. Um, one reason because he he was very um, long in um, in operation. He was used very long until the late 60s. And um, the other reason why it is called the last of the first is that it's uh, the only of these uh, very first computers which. Uh, is rebuilt in a, in a museum and, and, and it can be uh, seen there in the Melbourne Museum in the state, not in the working state, but in the form um, of, um, in, a, in his original form. I show you some pictures. Here, you see, it's, um, they started building uh, this computer in, in 49. It was also intended um, to, 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 to make a commercial um, um, product line out of it, but maybe um, because of, of the close relationship to, to England, um, they skipped this uh, ambition and so it uh, remained the only this single computer. Um, but as I said, these computers were, um, were used until the late uh, 60s, um, and um, it's, it's yeah, you can see yeah, what, what you can see here. Oh, that, that's a nice one. You see if, what, what it means to have a LAN party with the computer and so <laughs> Tough guys. Then, then, today. All right. But um, um, I um, also want to, to um, um, show you here these, you see here six monitors, six monitors. And these monitors are now important for the games and also here these, these light rows. These are also lights which um, give the, the people, the operators, um, uh, a clue if the computer is, is uh, operating right or wrong. And so these are all controlling um, 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 devices, all controlling um, interfaces, um, but they were used um, also for, for play games. And this is what I want to show you now. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm lucky to be in contact of um, Dick Jensen. He's, um, he worked there at the um, Cyrex computer since uh, 57, and since 57 he wrote games. Um, um, in total, five games, um, which are still existing, and that's uh, uh, interesting, because it's um, now exists in an emulator, and I can show you some of these games. This emulator is also programmed by someone who worked at this computer, uh, John Spencer, and um, so um, he found the paper tapes and just implemented this game paper tapes in the emulator and so we have five of these very early games available and I can show you some of these games. Zark, that's it. <clears throat> 
So here, there's also a version of NIM. So I, I um, asked Dick Jensen if, if he know about this um, story before, and he said, no, I haven't uh, noticed this then, and, but it's interesting to know. But it's not that uh, um, surprising, because, um, because yeah, it's, it's... Verehrte Kongressteilnehmer, in wenigen Minuten wird der Gewinner der Fotoausstellung am Wikipedia-Stand bekannt gegeben. Vielen Dank. <laughs> Is somebody here who uh, take part of this? No? Okay. Um, so um, maybe we start with a little one. It's Kalender. It's not really a game, but it's, 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 it's fun. Um, so um, we have today the 13th. Um, I just entered here 12, 5, 1, 1, 6. And as we can see, Saturday. So it works. <laughs> um, okay, now, now um, 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 this one here, Telepath. This is this is uh, was a quite famous game in this um, um, facility where the Cyrek was um, um, working. Um, telepath. Um, it was used. It was used um, um, by the the people who work with the computer. It was not written. Um, because of, of any uh, ambitious research project, it was written by fun and it was played by fun and somehow it's still fun. So what we see here, this is the, the um, this is one of these light rows above the, the monitors here, and the one means that this light is um, on, and um, the aim is now to make the light go to the right. If if it went to the right, if it goes goes to the right, I am the winner. If it's to the left, the computer is the winner. And what is this game about? So I, so the computer guesses which direction I do. So I can press the one, that means left, and I pre can press um, the um, the nine or the zero. Um, no, one and zero. You know, um, I can press the zero um, if I said right and. Before the computer guessed what I did, and if he's right, then the lamp goes to the left, and if he's wrong, if he guessed wrong, it goes to the right. So, just so maybe um, tell me, uh, right, left, someone, is somebody here who wants to? Who? Left. All right, left. Um, in which direction it, it goes? To the right. Then, uh, so he guessed wrong, and it's good. Now go on, go on. Left. left. Lose. Okay, left again. Left again. Lose again. <laughs> left. left, all right. <laughs> right. Okay. It's, it's a game which can be played very fast. <laughs> <laughs> At least at, at this computer. I don't know how long this uh, Cyrus computer <laughs> needs to calculate. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. Oh. Left, right, right. <laughs> left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> All right. Okay, left, right. Okay, and now he won. So um, somehow it's 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 a simple and funny game, but it's it's it still has it still makes some fun. And um, so Dick Jensen um, is, uh, told me the story that there was a woman, a colleague of, of them, who used to win every time against Telepaths. And so um, he was really angry about that, and so he made. An advanced version of, of Telepath. It's called Ball. We can. Uh, we. I have it here also as an uh, emulator version. And um, so the rules are slightly different. What happens is if you ha uh, uh, win the um, second time, it's not only one point going to the right, but two. And if you won, uh, or the computer uh, wins to the third time, then three. So it's it's much faster. And um, yeah. So these are. Um, this is ball here, and now I, I show you React. This is um, this is an action game, <laughs> <laughs> which does nothing else than um, calculating the time between um, these. Um, here, we, we must look at this row also uh, uh, again. 
And if, if there's one light flashing, I have to press the um, press enter to start or X to exit. I, I think it's uh, the space, the space. And, uh, and then he just uh, tell me um, how long I need it. So I start. Oh, oh, oh that's, that was very bad. You see here, yeah, not, not very good, but because I pressed the wrong bit button. Um, let's start again. Oh no, I must restart it, that's the problem here. So it's, it only could execute it once. <laughs> then it freezes. All right. So now I'm trying to be better. Ah, you see? Here. Okay. And, um, yeah, you can play this against each other, and the one with uh, the best reaction time is the winner. Um, it's very easy. And um, yeah. So, only a few minutes are left, and uh, now I show you. Um, I show you um, how this fun part, which for sure is somehow a very um, 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 elitaris uh, unterfang. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> but there were um, um, ambitions at this time to 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 design an end consumer product, and um, I can show this product uh, um, show to you. This is the Geniac. Yeah, the Geniac uh, was sold 55 and um, it's, um, it consists um, mainly um, out of these um, um, programmable um, 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 circles. Um, it can be programmed by wiring and um, so an interesting thing is, um, so I don't know how, uh, it, I, I think it was not a huge success at this time, but it's. Uh, I think it's. It's notable that um, it exists <coughs> at this time, and um, it's also interesting that um, here computer music could be composed. I'm very sure that this computer couldn't play music, but it can be somehow composed. Um, <laughs> don't ask me why. This is. Um, um, I, I'm. I'm uh, haven't gone uh, very deep into into this genius thing, but I can sh I can uh, and this is the last thing I want to to show you um, one example, if not the first uh, example of um, computer generated music, and this brings us back to the Syrac computer, uh, this Australian computer, and. Um, Because not only lights and not only monitors were used as a debugging um, interface, but also loudspeakers. You can imagine what the big advantage is from, from loudspeakers as a debugging tool. You must not stand. You must not uh, stand in, in the in the front of, of, of the controlling um, um, unit. You can change broken parts, and here, if you have the right one or not. So it, it makes your um, location un independent uh, as an operator. And this debugging tool, this loudspeaker, very simple loudspeaker, was used then to generate music. And um, this is what I want to give you on your way back home. Um, we, see, we hear now maybe the very first computer generated music.
you're working in this computer museum or? Yes, I'm, I'm I mean, working at... <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, <coughs> yes, I'm, um, I build it up and uh, I, I cur uh, I'm a curator. Um, uh, so it's, it's a pretty big collection, meanwhile, located here in Berlin. We ran four years um, from 60, um, early 60, um, uh, 97 until uh, late 2000, a permanent exhibition here in Berlin, um, in, the, in the front house where the sea base is now located. You um, should know this place here uh, around the corner in the Romestrasse. And um, since uh, we um, closed our permanent exhibition, we're doing temporary projects with this um, collection and this collection becomes bigger year by year and um, I'm, I'm doing lectures, I'm writing about computer game history and I'm doing, um, I'm doing um, exhibitions. Maybe if you are in, in Stuttgart in February, um, there we will open um, an exhibition only about Pong. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a Pong history um, which is very important for, for, the, for the founding of the whole computer game industry, but there are a lot of, really a lot of very recently made um, artworks which, um, which um, relates um, to Pong, and so we show a lot of these artworks, Lincoln Lights, I'm sure you know, or this um, um, Pong game, and uh, there are a lot of others. Um, uh, last year, the Pong mechanic from Rick Niklas Roy was shown here at the Congress, and um, so we um, compile all this um, uh, Pong-related artworks, this Pong art, and then there's also a small Pong science section where Pong is used um, for, for high-tech uh, research, um, interface research, and so on. So, hey! <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you very much.